The Lord be with you. And good morning. Welcome to our online service here for the eighth Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, the Lord is going to show you some patience today. May it be a blessing to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, so rule and govern our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that ever mindful of your final judgment, we may be stirred up to holiness of living here, and may dwell with you in perfect joy thereafter. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the eighth Sunday after Pentecost is from Isaiah chapter 44. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. Besides me there is no God. Who is like me? Let him proclaim it. Let him declare and set it before me. Since I appointed an ancient people, let them declare what is to come and what will happen. Fear not, nor be afraid. Have I not told you from of old and declared it? And you are my witnesses. Is there a God besides me? There is no rock. I know not any. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Romans chapter 8. St. Paul writes, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and obtain the freedom of the children of the, the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the Holy Gospel, according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter, Jesus put another parable before them, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while his, while his men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds also appeared. And the servants of the master of the house came, and they said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have weeds? He said to them, An enemy has done this. So the servants said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he said, No, lest in gathering the weeds you root up the wheat along with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time I will tell the reapers, Gather the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples came to him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seed is the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the close of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are gathered and burned with fire, so will it be at the close of the age. 
The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom and all causes of sin and all lawbreakers, and throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. He who has ears, let him hear. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from his Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Fellow baptized saints, would you consider yourself a patient person? What a cheeky way to start a sermon, isn't it? You don't know if I'm threatening you with a real long sermon or getting you to actually consider the question. Well, what do you think? How are you with waiting? What is the longest you've ever waited for something? Like, set your mind to it, committed to see it through, and just waited. Patience has become something of a unicorn these days, hasn't it? Our minds have been fashioned by having click and tap access to everything right in our hand, and a near instant response to communication. We are a people of convenience stores, drive through restaurants, and two-day shipping. We're obsessed with reducing our wait time, but unfortunately, in so doing, we have made ourselves intolerant of delays. We've taught ourselves to be impatient, to sigh and roll our eyes at the smallest inefficiency, to fill the airwaves with all the ways our plans have been held up by this or that. No, patience is no longer a virtue in our culture. By the way we speak, react, and live, you'd think it's a sign of weakness. Lord, give me patience. Just not right now. I'll be patient later. It's like the only thing we can actually wait for is the day when we'll become patient. And there are consequences for our irritability. It might make us feel powerful in a weak moment, but we hate the way we're impatient with those we love. It might make us feel in control in one instance, but we hate how it doesn't let our heart find rest, how it keeps spinning and spinning and never settling. Patience. <laughs> how can you be patient? when you're always anxious. Now this may paint a pitiful picture of life in the 21st century, but by the sounds of our gospel reading, things weren't really all that different back in Jesus' day. Mankind has never known, been known for its patience. So there's no surprise that the parable our Lord speaks today brings a lot of furrowed brows and confused looks. Wait until harvest, to gather the weeds? No way! In fact, the moment the disciples are alone with Jesus, they ask him what it means, because honestly, what kind of master farmer waits until the harvest to pull up the weeds? Now, before we get ahead of ourselves, there is a certain type of weed found in that area of the world that Jesus is likely referring to here. It's called bearded darnel. And in its early stages of growth, this bearded darnel looks exactly like wheat. That's right. <laughs> in fact, it is extremely difficult to distinguish bearded darnel from wheat 
until really it's near fully grown. It's an imposter, a counterfeit. It passes as wheat because it looks the same on the outside, but on the inside, it's weed. What is Jesus saying? He's describing the way the kingdom of heaven looks here in the world. It's a mixed field. There's wheat and there are weeds. There are those who hear his promise and count on that word alone for their salvation. And there are those who look like a believer on the outside, but have put their trust in something other than Christ in their hearts. Can you tell the difference? No, not from the outside, Jesus says. And in fact, you're not supposed to. Thanks be to God. No, the one who sees hearts knows. And he is patiently trying to change those weedy hearts into wheat. He's working diligently to create faith by his lavish grace. The last thing he wants is for you and I to know, know who they are so we can rush in with all our impatience and pull out all his impatient work. You can almost see the master telling the servants, stay away from the field. I know what I'm doing. This is the way my church is, Jesus says. And you don't need to change it. Yes, it's messy. It's disorderly because it is merciful and ruled by grace. Have you seen my cross? <laughs> wow, we really need this message, don't we? Because we are impatient. Impatient with our families. Impatient with ourselves. Impatient with the Lord and his church. We want glory now. We aren't willing to suffer falsehood. We cannot wait for God's timing because we think we have better timing. We think we know what is needed, that we understand good and evil, weeds and wheat, but this was the problem from the beginning, dear ones. This was the fall. Adam thought he knew better than God, that he should be the one to determine good and evil. Oh, how quickly we return to the forbidden fruit. Oh, how predictable the children of man really are. And yet God is patient with Adam and with you. He's willing to wait a long time, years even, to teach you and guide you. His patience knows no bounds. He waited centuries for the appointed time to send his son in our flesh. Jesus waited years through suffering poverty and persecution, always headed toward the suffering of the cross. He even waited three days in death before his glorious resurrection. Why? For you. Because he made himself the patience you lack. He made up for your irritability and your shortness and your impatience. He waited and suffered for you trusting where you have not, waiting even now for you to hear, to trust, to count on him. True love waits. It waits to the bitter end. Christ shows us what it is to be fully human. It is knowing the truth, yet in mercy allowing the truth to be maligned in the short term for the sake of forgiveness in the long term. Being fully human is being perfectly in line with the truth in your own person, and yet also patiently allowing that truth to reach its finality at a later time. Being fully human is embodying the justice when it comes to yourself, yet embodying mercy when it comes to others. Patience is what holds these things together. God's patience for us also gives us an incredible example to follow. For all of us are sinners. Should we be offended by people in our congregation, you know, hurt by the way we are treated, we are not to create conflict or leave 
We are not to pull up the weeds. Certainly, we make all efforts to reconcile, but for the sake of the church, for the sake of those with faith, we are to patiently endure. We don't base our faith on the words and actions of the people who call themselves Christians around us. We base our faith on God's word, his revealed truth, and we pray that all others would do the same. Oh, but this is hard, isn't it? Trying to grow in the weeds. The world is all around you, crowding in, stealing away the sunlight. It is doing everything it can to distract you from the reality of Christ, doing everything it can to make you downplay your faith, to put it second or third or last, to get weedy. But here is God's promise. All this tension will only happen for a season. For at the close of the age, the Son of Man will deal with all causes of sin and all lawbreakers. They will be burned, burned so their seeds don't spread and cause more damage. But you, you who cling to Christ alone, will shine like the sun in the kingdom of your Father. All of this suffering will be worth it. All of the trials and the struggles of the faith will pay off an eternity of times over. Because this is your confidence. God's patience, his long-suffering to save you, his willingness to remain faithful to you even in death. You can be confident in him. Do you hear his promise? Christ has planted you. You are his precious wheat. He knows what he will do with you. He knows the time to harvest you, the time to gather you into his barn, and you will shine like the sun in this kingdom of his father. Yes. <laughs> I mean, yes. <laughs> you are working on being patient. But Christ was patient for you. Because of him, God credits you as being eternally patient. So when your enemy sows weeds in your field, you have no need to rip them out. Merely turn again to Christ and believe, for in him you are completely forgiven, and you will endure to the harvest. In the name of Jesus, amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen. In our prayers this morning, we're going to continue to pray for Pastor Mark Hennig, who Lutheran Church of the Redeemer has called to be her pastor, uh, and who is now considering that call. We'll also pray for all those we've been praying for in recent weeks. The, the form of the prayers today follow the ectene form, which means that I will say, let us pray to the Lord, and then you, his priests, his dear priests, will make the prayer by saying, Lord, have mercy. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For certainty that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For wisdom to steward God's creation well until new life supplants the groanings of this age, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who care for the elderly in their homes or other facilities, that they might be instruments of comfort and company to the lonely, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who do not repent or believe, that God would be patient with them, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and that he would send his Holy Spirit to bring them into saving faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all leaders, that in the face of conflict and discord, they would work for peace and justice, especially protecting the weak and defenseless. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who endure the bondage of decay through infirmity and weakness, that their faith would be preserved and their sufferings be considered incomparable to the glory to be revealed in them. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, you have called us according to your purpose. You cause all things to work together for our good. Keep us safe until that day when you gather us with the saints into your kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.